Hi, this is Dr. Bass here. Now, a couple of days ago, when I was driving home from work, I saw the check engine light flashing for about a minute and then went away. And then come back and start flashing and went away. And every time it did that, I also noticed the acceleration was very rough. So I got home and connected the scan tool to my vehicle and checked the error code that might have been stored in the vehicle. When I checked the stored codes, there were no codes stored. And then I checked the pending codes, and it showed a P0303, cylinder three misfire detected. With a P0303, the last digit represents the cylinder of the engine. Now I was really hoping that would be one of the three cylinders on the front, because on this Nissan V6 3.5 liter, we have three cylinders on the front and three at the back. Well, with my luck, it happens to be the one at the back right here, cylinder three. So this means I have to remove the upper intake plenum, which is very involved on this vehicle. Uh, a couple years ago, I did another series of videos on changing out the valve cover and also the spark plugs on this vehicle. And it was a lot of work. I am not going to show you all the steps here in detail because you can always look at that series of videos I did a few years back and it's very, very detailed showing you step by step. But the job is going to involve me taking out the window cowl to give me more room right here to access the back bolts over there. And then I'm going to have to remove the intake plenum right here to get to the three coil packs at the back. Now this vehicle I have here is 13 years old, 136,000 miles. So it was a matter of time when stuff starts failing. So right now I believe it's one of the coil pack on cylinder three that is going bad. I did buy new coil packs to install. So let's get started. And After getting the intake plenum off, now we can access the coil pack. There are three at the back here. So let me take a minute to show you the bolts that are very difficult to get to for this job. So at the very beginning of the removal process, I had to reach behind here and remove two bolts that connect the upper plenum to a bracket at the back. Near the end, of the removal process, I had to remove the four bolts on this plenum. The top two are not difficult at all. You can reach behind with a regular ratchet and get to it. The bottom two is a little bit more difficult. This one on the left side is not too bad. You can still use a small ratchet like this and get to it. The really difficult one is gonna be this one at the bottom right hand side. And I have a little stubby ratchet that you see right here, and it fits exactly in this small space behind it. And basically, I was able to remove the bolt just by turning it like this. Here is the other lower plenum. Let me turn this around so you can see what the back looked like. So we have the two top bolts, two bottom bolts. Now this bolt here that you see is for a bracket 
that holds two green connectors at the back. Now, this is the first time you're doing this job on your vehicle and nobody else has worked on it. Then what you need to do is remove this bolt and take that bracket off this plenum. Otherwise, the connectors, the two green connectors, are still going to be attached. Since the removal of the intake plenum is very involved, for this job, I'm going to go ahead and replace all three of the ignition coil pack. Also considering the age of this vehicle, 13 years old and with 136,000 miles, I'm also concerned that the other ignition coil might go pretty soon. At this time, I'm not going to change the ignition coil pack on the front side here. And these are the three right here because they're very easily accessible. So if they do pose any problems later on, I can replace those very easily. Let me show you one of the Nissan ignition coil pack I have here. Part number is 22448-8J11C. And this part is made in Japan. Now if you buy these from the dealer, it retails for about $135 each. I was able to find a seller uh, selling these brand new ones on eBay for $77, which is a very good deal. Now on one side of the coil pack, it is stamped and marked. Let me give you a close-up look of the marking that you'll find on the factory one. The other thing I'll be replacing is the spark plug that's in cylinder 3. So I picked up one of the NGK PLFR5A-11. Now, the other spark plugs are actually only about 2 years old, so I will not be replacing those other ones, but only this one in cylinder 3. And just to give you a look of what a new one looks like. So on each coil pack, there is a 10 millimeter bolt that we need to remove. Disconnect the connector that goes to the coil pack. And here it is. Now I'm going to remove the other two coil packs. So I just took out the cylinder 3 spark plug and let me show you. That white deposit you see there might be due to um, high temperature rises and it can cause uh, misfire. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and replace the spark plug. Here's the new spark plug. And for this NGK spark plug, you want to torque this down to 18 foot pounds.
For the reinstallation of the plenum, there are two gaskets. There's this one right here. Now this one's all metal, so if it's in good condition, you can reuse it. There's another gasket down here. This one you must replace, okay? And I do have the replacement one right here from Nissan. This one is part number 14032-8J10A. You want to get some brake clean and clean the surface. Also don't forget to clean the bottom side of the plenum. So I've gone ahead and reinstalled the two rear bolts here. So it's a little loose right now, so I can fit the plenum over here. And then once I have all the bolts in place, then I'll tighten everything up. So I've loosely installed the bolts at the front here, and then now I'm going to slip this gasket on the back here. On this pipe here, there's an EGR valve gasket you need to replace, and it looks like this. So make sure you get a replacement one. The part number is 14719-4S100, and it goes between the plenum and the EGR pipe right here. With the five bolts on the plenum, you need to tighten it in this order. One, two, three, four, five. And you need to tighten them to 14 foot-pounds. The two nuts on this side needs to be tightened to 12 foot-pounds. Okay, I've tightened the two bolts on the back bracket here. Now I'm just going to reattach all the components on the front side here. Okay, everything up front here is all buttoned up. I just need to reinstall the window cowl, which includes the ECM on the passenger side. Okay, it's been two days since doing this repair, which you just watched, and I wanted to make sure that the cylinder three misfire problem is truly resolved before wrapping up this video and so far I've not had any more problems with the pending code P0303 now before ending the video I do want to mention a couple of things first off if any of you are watching this video because you have a similar error that you found on your vehicle due to a cylinder misfire I highly recommend that you stop driving it and get it fixed the reason for that is because if you continue to drive it with this problem, there can be a lot of unburned fuel that end up in the catalytic converter and it can damage it. And when you damage your catalytic converter, it can actually clog it up and cause damage back into your engine. Secondly, you might notice that in all my repair videos, 
I tend to use the factory OEM parts. That does not mean that I never use aftermarket parts. That really depends on what the function of that component does. And if it's a critical part in the engine, I tend to go towards using the original factory parts. Now with the coil pack, I could have gone with aftermarket and saved a lot of money. But because the job is so involved and I want a reliable vehicle, I'd rather pay a little bit extra so that I know it's going to be worry free for the next perhaps several years. Instead of having the component fail prematurely, basically do it right one time instead of having it to do it several times. Now, I do use aftermarkets on my vehicle. If you follow my channel, you know my brakes are actually from eBay uh, for both my vehicles. They're the slotted cross-drilled one, and I'm very, very happy with it. The wipers I have on my car. I do not buy expensive Rain-X wipers or anything fancy. I buy the cheapest Walmart $5 wipers. They work perfectly fine. I don't have any problems with it. Now I can totally understand that some of you are on a real tight budget and you have to do what you have to do. And in fact, I'm on a budget. That's why I am repairing the vehicle myself instead of paying the dealer or mechanic to do this repair. And the rough estimate I have for this job is I saved myself probably about $400 in labor. Now one thing I forgot to mention early in the video is the numbering of the cylinder on this engine. With mine, it was P0303, that's the error code, the last digit being the cylinder number, number 3. You might have a P0301 or P0304. With that last digit, it'll tell you which cylinder is having the problem. The numbering of the six cylinders goes like this. Cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comments section. And don't forget to click on a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.